Hi, my name is Kathy Salmon, and I'm a realtor with Easy Home Search Real Estate in Fall River, Mass. And I'm going to go over with you step by step on how to buy your first house. If you like what you see on this video and want to learn more, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes. Now, I'm located in Fall River, Mass, but as long as you're in the United States, these are tips that will help you when buying your first house. So here we go, starting with tip number one. Are you ready financially? You need to have a credit score of at least 580. The higher the credit score, the better your rate. Some banks will go even lower than 580, but you'll pay a higher interest rate. So if you have a low credit score, get it above 620. If you need help doing that, I can have you talk to a loan officer and they can guide you through the process of improving your credit score. Have you had stable employment for the past year? You are going to have to show you have income and stable employment. You can also include anything like child support and alimony. All of this would need to be documented on your application. This way, the bank can tell you what they will loan you, which is a pre-approval, and they'll give you an estimate of your monthly payment, which is based on the current interest rates. Now, do you have reserves in the bank for emergency purposes? You'll want to have some money in the bank so that if anything should happen down the road, you have money in the bank that can take care of these unforeseen expenses. You don't need $15,000, $20,000 in the bank, but you should have some funds saved up just in case you run into these unforeseen expenses. Because keep in mind, you are now responsible for these expenses, not your landlord. Now, let's talk about how much money you're going to need to buy the house. Most people should expect to put down 3.5%. This is what's known as an FHA loan. There are also VA loans. These are for active or retired military. And the VA loans require zero down towards the home. There's also a USDA loan that's specific to certain areas. This type of loan is contingent on your income. Then there's the conventional loan, which is generally requires 20% down. There are also programs where the government will help you with the down payment. Your loan officer can tell you about these programs. So it's possible to buy a house with zero down. However, I would say plan on 3.5% of the sale of the home as a down payment. Now, there's going to be closing costs. These are the fees involved for the privilege of allowing the bank to loan you money. The fees include things like title insurance. This ensures that the person that is selling the house has the legal right to sell the house. Then there are the fees for the escrow company or attorney fees that will be charged to handle the entire transaction. These are the typical closing costs and they can run anywhere from 3-4% to of the sale cost of the house. Sometimes the buyer may ask the seller to pay the closing cost or pay a percent towards the closing cost. The seller does not have to pay the closing cost. However, if you make a good offer on the house, it's always worth asking the seller. Tip number two, find a great realtor. I always suggest getting a referral from people that you know that have worked with an agent or know a good agent. And you want to meet with the agent to make sure you're both a good fit for each other. So if you meet with an agent, you're going to interview them. You're going to ask them a couple of questions. Things like, how many buyers do you represent at one time? Now, if they tell you that they're working with 15 buyers, more than likely they have a team. And more than likely, you're going to be working with a team member. You may never see that agent again. Do they do this full-time or part-time? If they do it part-time, no big deal. But you want to ask how much time do they have available to work with you to help you find the home? Do they have any testimonials? You'll want to know what are other people saying about this agent. You can go online and read them or simply ask them to send you the testimonials 
And then if I were you, I'd ask them for their contact information so that you can find out exactly how it was to work with this agent. One of the most important things, pick someone that is local and knows the area you are considering. Tip number three, get pre-approval. If you have a bank that you use locally and you like them, by all means give them a call. Let them know you're interested in purchasing a home and you'd like to get pre-approved. See what they have to offer in terms of a loan. Or, once you've hired an agent, ask them if they have a bank or a mortgage company that they could recommend that has a good loan program for first-time home buyers. I work with lenders every day and I am more than happy to give my client their information. And keep in mind, we do not receive any compensation or kickback for recommending a lender to you. We refer vendors to our clients all the time. These are people we've worked with in the past, we trust them, we like them, we know that they're going to do a good job. One of the biggest reasons you want to get pre-approval is you know what you're able to get from the bank so that you know the price range to look for. If you find a house that you like and it falls within what you can afford, then you can make an offer. See, the seller is not going to accept an offer without the pre-approval. They don't want to take the risk of taking the home off the market and potentially lose out on another deal because you were unable to get your pre-approval. So the best thing to do is to get that pre-approval before you even start looking at homes. You want to know what you can afford, what the bank is going to loan you. So now you're pre-approved, you found an agent, you know what you can afford each month, now you start looking. Tip number four, start doing your research. Go to Realtor.com and start looking at homes. I find that Realtor.com has the most accurate, up-to-date information. It's reliable. There is nothing worse than when I get a phone call from a client. They love a house. They've got to see it. I get excited for them. I go online. I can't find it it's not for sale or it's already been sold. So we need to be looking at homes that are active and still for sale. Tip number five, learn about your local market. This is something that your realtor can help you with. How long do homes take to go under contract? Do they go under contract within three or four days or is it longer? And what's the sale price to asking price ratio? Do they sell for 90% of the asking price or are they over asking price? And do the sellers usually give closing cost credit? See, if this is a typical scenario, then when you ask for the closing cost being paid, they won't be surprised. These are things that your realtor can help you with prior to making an offer on a property. Tip number six, actively start house hunting. You're going to sit down with your agent and you're going to review exactly what you're looking for in a house. You need three bedrooms, you need two baths, you want a big fenced in backyard, you want 2,000 square feet, you want to be in a good school district, you want a garage. These are the things you tell your agent and then what your agent will do is set up a search based on what you're looking for using the multiple listing service and then However often you want, you receive these properties via email. You can have them sent daily. You can have them sent once a week. However you're comfortable, every other day. All you need to do is let your agent know. Then, when you see a property that you like, you contact your agent. Your agent will then call the seller's agent. They'll schedule an appointment, and then you go and you see the house. Now, usually agents require 24 hours advance notice. That's for the seller. This way, the seller gets ample notice to get the home ready to show. Keep in mind, it can be a lot of work for the seller to get the house ready to show. They need to clean the house. They're also going to need to leave the house. So let's say they have kids or they have a dog. It's a lot of work for them to prepare. So giving them 24 hours notice is ample time. If you're planning to go out, let's say on a Saturday, you've seen maybe two or three homes, maybe four homes that you want to see, let your agent know by Thursday. 
This gives them plenty of time to contact the seller's agent to schedule the showings. And when you have multiple houses that you want to see, it just makes it easier for the agent and gives them plenty of time to set up a route. Now, you've put an offer in on a property and it doesn't get accepted. Maybe there were two or three other offers that came in and they were better. The price was higher, less contingency, whatever the case may be. Keep this in mind as a learning experience. So you tweak your next offer. So if you have to go through three or four offers, don't get frustrated. It's common in a seller's market. So now you put an offer in, it gets accepted. Woohoo! Congratulations. You are now under contract. Now your contract is contingent on three things. Your ability to get the loan, the appraisal, and the home inspection. Also, once you make an offer, you're going to give an earnest deposit. That deposit is usually held by the seller's broker in an escrow account. The amount of the deposit is determined between you and your agent. So let's talk about the home inspection. You want to hire someone that checks everything soup to nuts. If you don't have an inspector, don't worry. Your agent is going to have at least three that they can recommend. You contact them, find out their availability, what they have to offer, what their pricing is, and then you go ahead and you schedule the inspection. Now during the inspection, they're going to check the roof, they're going to make sure that the heating system goes on, the plumbing works, the electrical, they're going to check the structure of the home. A good inspector is going to go through and check everything soup to nuts and give you a report that will show you everything regarding the condition of the home. This way, you know if there's anything you should be aware of and if there's anything you could consider a deal breaker and get your deposit back. There may just be some minor things, but you could ask the seller to fix them. Or the things are so minor that you want to fix them yourself when you move in. Or you can ask the seller to drop the sale price because the problem is so major, but you want to take care of it when you move in. But you need to know these things before you start to haggle. So there are a lot of different items that you can have inspected. You want to make sure that you know as much about the condition of that home as possible. But it's up to you and what you want to have done. It's your responsibility. You see, the seller discloses what they know about any known defects, but there could be things that they don't know. Maybe they didn't realize that there was a crack in the chimney, or they didn't realize there was a heating system issue. The sellers just may not know, so it's really important that you find out about any of these issues before you move in. So what's next? The bank does an appraisal. They hire an appraiser to make sure the house is worth what you've offered to pay. And last, the bank will begin working on getting you final loan approval. Tip number seven, please do not go out and buy a new car or go on a trip or start buying that furniture that you want to have in your new home. You don't want to make any major purchases that will affect your credit report. This could impact your ability to qualify for the loan. So let's go back and talk about the earnest deposit. If during the inspection period you find out there are too many issues and you don't want to move forward with the house, you can get your deposit back. If the appraisal comes back less than what you offered, you can ask the seller to drop the price. If the seller says no, you can cancel the contract and get your deposit back. If your loan does not come through or the interest rate goes up so that you can't afford the monthly mortgage payment, you can cancel the contract and get your deposit back. This is as long as you are in the allotted time that you've already agreed to in the contract. And keep in mind, your agent, the loan officer, and the closing attorney are also watching the estate. So everybody's got your back because they don't want to see you lose your deposit. Tip number eight, working with your lender. Sometimes your lender may ask you for things that you just think are crazy. Where is this coming from? Well, let's say for example, I don't know, they look back at your credit history and they see that there was a late car payment. They may just ask you to put a letter of explanation together. Just be patient and give them whatever they ask for and as quickly as possible. We just want to make sure we get to the closing table on time. 
Keep in mind the seller is prepared to close as are you on a certain date. If things get prolonged because you're not delivering to the bank on time and if the commitment from the bank takes longer than the date on the contract, the seller does not have to agree to an extension. You just want to make sure that you are performing according to the contract so there's never any risk of losing that deposit for any reason. So now it's closing time. Everything's gone according to plan. The inspection is done. You and the seller have agreed on a few things that need to be fixed. The appraisal has come in at the sale price. Now you'll be receiving your closing docs or better known as the CD. These are for you to review. This is just a check to make sure there is no surprises on the fees and the mortgage amount. If anything is found that is in question, this is the time to get with the closing attorney or the lender to review. This is also the time the attorney will let you know how much money to bring to the closing. The attorney will let you know how you need to bring the money to them, whether it be a personal check or a bank check or if you want to do a wire transfer. Tip number nine, the day of the closing you are going to want to do a final walkthrough of the property. This is the time to make sure the property is broom swept and there is no damage to the property. And if there were any items promised in the contract, you want to make sure that they've been left at the house. You just want to make sure the house is in the same condition as the time you wrote the offer. Now at the closing, there's going to be a lot of documents to sign. Basically, these are the forms that you promised to pay back the loan. Once everything is signed, the attorney's office will then go on record and you'll get the keys. Congratulations. So these are the steps involved in buying your first home. So just to recap, first, you want to find a great realtor, someone that will sit with you and explain everything you need to know about buying a house and be there to answer all your questions. Second, you want to get pre-approved. So you know what you qualify for and you know what your payments are going to be. And third, have a nest egg for any unforeseen issues. So thank you so much for joining me on this video on how to buy your first home. I hope you found it informational. And if you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button so that you can see more of these informational videos. And be sure to share this with a friend that might be looking to buy their first home. Even if they're not in Massachusetts or you're not in Massachusetts, that's okay. This video can still be very helpful. And if you're in Massachusetts, please feel free to contact me with any questions. I'll help you any way I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.